Here's Lee Ho again, Mr. Kaczynski with you. Today we're going to do lesson 3.5, constant rate of change and linear relationships. Um, honestly, or linear equations and rate of change. I think I'd pause the video right now, read page 199. Maybe it goes into 200, everything right up until the investigation. So let's let's do that. Pause the video, read page 199. Go. Okay, so rate of change. Here's the basic change in output values over change in input values. It is the B value in this intercept format. It's the thing being multiplied by the independent variable. It, again, we talked about it in class. Um, you can call it M, you can call it A, you can call it B. It, it really doesn't matter. Whatever's being multiplied by X is, is our constant rate of change. It's X is how many times we hit enter on a recursive rule. It's how many times we increase by that rate of change. All right, so here's the deal today. In this investigation, we're dealing with wind chill, just like the example you just read. Uh, we're going to use the relationship between the temperature and wind chill to explore the concept of rate of change and its connections to tables, scatter plots, and recursive rules, equations, and graphs. The data in this table is for a wind speed of, of 20 miles per hour. It only works with when the wind, spills, when wind speed is 20 miles per hour. The wind chills would be different if the wind speed were anything else. All right. Use this data to complete each task. Define the input and output variables. Okay. The input is temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And the output is wind chill words in degrees Fahrenheit. Guess we'll add here four wind speeds of twenty miles per hour. Let's go with that. Plot the points and describe the viewing window we use. Here we go. So let's go second plus seven, one, two, stat, enter. Put in these temperatures, negative five, zero, one, two, five, fifth, oops. Are with me? 15 and 35. And then in L2, we're going to put these wind chills, negative. 28.540, negative 21.980, negative 20.668, negative 19.356, negative 15.420. Well, you know how to do this by now. Negative 2.3. Uh-oh, what did I do? Mess something up here. I got the negative 19.356. Clear that. Negative 15.42. Negative 2.3. And 23.94. All right, got all those. Now let's turn our scatter plot on. Set our window. What are we going to do? Temperature. Let's go from negative 10 up to, let's go 40 for right now. So lower than the negative 5 and higher than the 35. We'll scale it by 5s. And then wind chill, let's go from negative 30 to positive 30. That should fit everything. Let's scale that by fives as well. So when they say talk about or describe the window you use, we can just put it like this. We can put a brace and we'll just type in those numbers. Negative 10 to 40 scaled by fives and negative 30, positive 30 scaled by fives. That's kind of how the book show it in other instances here we go so there's our window scatter plot graph it 
Uh oh, I gotta have some data entry errors here. Let's find it. Negative five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Negative 28, negative 21, negative 20, negative 19, negative 15, negative 2.3. Not negative 23. There we go. Graph it. Now we got it right. Okay. Step three, copy and complete. Copy this table. Complete the third and fourth columns of the table by recording the changes between consecutive input and output values. Then find the rate of change. Okay. So you've already got this um, table in your note sheet. Maybe we use should we use? Let's use the table. We've already, oh, we don't have an equation. Let's use a recursive rule, maybe. I don't know, we could just use some mental math. Here we go. So what's the change in the input values from one to two? That is a change of one, right? And then from two to five, that's a change of three. From five to 15, that's a change of 10. And from 15 to 35, that's a change of 20. Changing the output values, I think I'm going to need a calculator here. So let's let's make sure we understand where these numbers are coming from. We got the negative 21.98, negative 21.98 minus negative 28.54, negative 28.54. That's my change in output values. That's 6.56. That's where they got that. So to get this change, I'm going to do negative 15. 0.42 minus negative 19.356. That's 3.936. 3.936. And then this last one, 23.94. And we're going to subtract the negative 2.3. That's 26.24. There we go. So these rates of change, they're saying to divide these two changes. 6.56 divided by 5. 6.56 divided by 5 is 1.312. 1.312. 1 1.312 divided by 1 is 1.312. 1.312 divided by 1 is 1.312. Hopefully you know what 3.936 divided by 3 is going to be. You guessed it. 1.312. Obviously, 13.12 divided by 10. You just move the decimal place over. 1.312. And just for the sake of consistency, we'll go ahead and plot this one in or punch this one in, even though we know what it's going to be, 1.312. There it is, a surprise to absolutely no one, but we did it. All right, so I think we've established that the rate of change is 1.312. Write a recursive rule that gives us these values listed in the table. Oh, um, okay, so for the inputs and outputs, okay. So let's do this. Let's a little room here, get rid of that. All right, how about uh, our starting values are actually negative 5, comma, negative 28.540. And we're going to take answer 1. And what are we going to do to that? We're going to, hmm, I guess we got to add 1, because otherwise we're not going to get all those values. And then answer. Two, we're going to add the rate of change, which is 1.312. We're going to do that repetitively. Enter, 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 enter. All right, so again, uh, you know, I'm not going to make those green because they're not really our starting values. But I'm definitely going to make this red because it is our rate of change. All right, go with that. Use your rule to write a linear equation. Ah, uh, maybe they do want me to. Maybe they do want me to put zero in here. So maybe we will put zero and negative twenty-eight point nine eight zero. 
because I mean, if I'm using the recursive rule, I, I need to use the y value when x is zero, or the the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit when the wind chill in degrees Fahrenheit when the temperature is zero. It's the only way I'm going to be able to do it. So here's our equation. It's going to be y equals negative 28.980. 28 it should be 21. I'll fix that. Plus 1.312. Times x. So what did I need to fix? This is supposed to be 21. All right, so let's do it wrong first. Let's go y equals. Let's put that negative 28.540 in there and then plus the 1.312x. Let's graph that. And you can see it's parallel to those points, but it doesn't match those points. It's got the same rate as change, but not the right y-intercept. And that's because our y-intercept needs to be negative 21.980. Graph it. They kind of say that. They definitely say that right here. Use your rule to write a linear equation in intercept form that relates the wind chill to temperature. Note that the starting value... Uh, oh, so they did want me to use that. All right, we'll do it one more time. I guess they wanted me to use negative 5 and negative 28.540. I guess we can still use the recursive rule because the recursive rule does eventually get us to the zero, negative 21.980. Okay, anyway, where do the numbers in your rule appear in your equation? Mm, okay, how about this? The negative 21.980 is the output when the input is zero and the 1.312 is the rate of change. Does that work? That red. Um, and I'll make this green. Push it together, put it over here. There we go. Graph the equation on the same set of axes as your scatter plot. Use the calculator table to check that your equation is correct. Does it make sense to draw a line through the points? Uh, where does the y intercept show up in your equation? Let's do that stuff. Okay, we already graphed it. Use the calculator table. Okay, let's go to the table, check that it gives us the right values. At negative five, there's the 28 point, negative 28.54. At zero, there's the negative 21.98. At one, negative 20.67. Two, negative 19.36. Five, negative 15.54. Or, or percent point four two, fifteen, negative 2.3, and 35. Where are you? 35, 23.94. Boom, it works. Okay, what else? Um, does it make sense to draw a line through it? Um, yes. It makes sense to draw a line because what this um, temperature is continuous, not like jumping from temperature to temperature. Temperature is continuous. Where does the y-intercept show up on your line? Uh, oh, in your equation? Y-intercept is the constant value in our equation. How about that? That a value is being added all the time. That's called the constant. Good. What do you notice about the values for the rate of change listed in your table? How does the rate of change show up in your equation and in your graph? Well, 
the rates of change are constant in our table, I guess. The rate of change shows up as the coefficient of x in our equation and as the slope in our graph. Let's break that down a little bit. I just chose the wrong red and that's going to bother me. There we go. Um, yeah, the rate of change are constant. It's a constant rate of change. Okay. Um, the rate of change shows up as the coefficient of x. So whatever x is being multiplied by, we call that the coefficient. And in our graph, that's the slope. So how steep in it, or slope, or well, we put that in parentheses, or steepness in our graph. Explain how to use the rate of change to find the actual temperature if the weather report indicates a wind chill of 9.5 with 20 mile per hour winds. So, I mean, it's good that they said 20 mile per hour winds because this equation only works for 20 mile per hour winds, but then they're giving us a wind chill. That's our output, remember that. So they're basically asking us to use this equation. So we're gonna go, like barely right at it. Okay, so we're gonna go 9.5 equals negative 21.980 plus 1.312 times x. So there's a lot of ways we can find this. I, I mean, I guess we could trace. I'm right now I'm tracing the, tracing the scatter plot. If I press up, now I'm tracing the line. I can look for that output of 9.5, which is right about 24. Pretty darn close to 24. Um, I could use the table, go backwards, looking for 9.5. And again, it's right at about 24. Or I could use an undo table to find it exactly. Right now, the, the DIR table is the only way we have to, to find this exactly. So I'll do that. I think we'll wrap it up. So we got our X. What are we going to do to it? We're going to multiply by 1.312. And then we're going to subtract 21.98. All right, to undo those things, we're going to add 21.98. And we're going to divide by 1.312. The end result of this is that we get the 9.5. Okay, so let's go back to my main page. 9.5, enter my, oh, no, I want it plus 21.98. Divided by 1.312. And this should come out to really close to 24. So 31.48 goes here. And that is, we're just going to say about 24 degrees Fahrenheit. We're done. We're done. And you can go ahead and start on the practice your skills um, section of 3.5. And I provided a solutions video for you. Have a good one.